Hey, how's it going guys? West Coast Cannabis with Optic LED Grow Lights .com. Check it out fellas. Happy Holidays. Let's all be kind to one another. Pay it forward. And hey, it's never too early to get medicated, man. Get medicated. Spark one up, fellas. So check it out. So I'm going to show you guys what we've got going on here. And I'll take a couple puffs myself here. Because this time of the year, I like to, you know, take it easy and reflect back. Be thankful for what I have. But let me show you what we've got going on here. Let me start from out here. Now, we're still under construction. You can see here, we have a vertical farming veg chamber. If we come out here, you can see I've started the drywall out here on this side. And this is the access to that vertical farming veg chamber, which if we take a look is empty other than the Optic 300 veg that's in there and that's gonna need to get moved down here. So we got Panda Film up. More Panda Film is showing up today. Now, let me show you guys, you know, I want to get your feedback on these beds and the setup in here. We'll take a closer look at the plants and of course, as always, the lights. A lot of you guys like to tune into this channel to see the latest LED tech that's out there. And you know, Optic has some amazing tech right now, guys. The industry best Samsung lights. So. Out of all the Samsung LED lights out there, the best ones today, according to Samsung, is their new horticulture-specific LEDs, which have special optics technology with 120-degree lenses with better materials. And what we have found at the Optic R&D headquarters, what we have found is that with the different prototypes that we have, with the LM301B and the LM301H, on our testing, we're like, okay, underneath the light, it seems pretty much about the same, but what we found, higher par around the edges with 301H. At least 7% more light from all our in-house R&D testing. Now, there's a couple other companies that are like, oh no, 301B is the same. Well, not according to Samsung, and their R&D labs that have tested them, they will clearly show you that this has a 3.03 micromoles per joule PAR or a PPF rating, okay? PE, photon efficiency rating. The LM301H. Now there's a couple companies that have not embraced the new horticulture specific LEDs that Samsung made just for us farmers. So if you're getting a light with Samsung LEDs in it, whether it's LED strips or some kind of a board with the Samsung LEDs on it, then definitely get the latest and greatest from Samsung. The LEDs that they made specifically for the farmers. Vertical farming. That is the specialty with these LEDs. They're vertical farming LEDs, so you can get the lights, you know, of course, closer to the plants. This light can get as close as 10 inches. You know, even 12 inches would be fine. The Optic 8, my all-time favorite light, man. 120 degree lenses on here as well. The Osram Bloom Enhancers and everything. But the Slim 600 is very popular right now, utilizing all the latest technology. This light just went up for sale on Thanksgiving. And there have been a lot of people picking this up and really liking it. It's a really, really nice light. The Slim 600, it's a $1,200 light got the dimmer on there got to have a dimmer these days you know unless it's a really small light the dimmers make a huge difference heat output easier to manage your heat your environment you don't have to move your light up and down as much it just comes in super handy oh I actually turned that up just temporarily but this is how I'm, I'm running the light in veg right now we're about a week away from starting flowering so I've been introducing the the deep reds at sunrise and sunset and they absolutely love it check that out guys they absolutely love it so this is how i run it in veg though this dimmer from day one when this light's turned on i like to run full power veg and then you raise the light up more 
because when you do raise it up, it helps to give you more even par spread and light distribution. When we lower it down closer to the plants, you're gonna get a lot more par in the middle and less around the edges. It's a really big light, but that's this is the best way to do it. And then you let the plants grow up into the light. We're about three feet from the light down here to the plants. The Optic 8, 500 watts, max power dimmable. The Slim 600 is 600 watts. Optic 6 Gen 4, we haven't even disclosed the specs on that, but what I can tell you, Gen 3 is 605 watts, and Optic 6 has been in the gym, getting bigger, faster, and stronger using less power now, much more efficient, but flexing its muscles with some high power output. Boom, check that out. Definitely a high power flowering light. It's rated for full cycle. Check that out, boom. Got the dimmers on there now. We've only got the one plant over there that I was planning on flowering. I took the, the biggest one from these five and put it out there to go just under that optic six there. So. You can see I've got this fan kind of pointing more downwards to get more air coming through here. Now all these plants, they are gonna get moved. Team Optic, shout out to Team Optic. Yeah, they're all gonna get moved in the flower room. So let me show you what's new. We have a uh, ambient weather. Check this thing out. It has many sensors. See my temp is lower than what I would want it to be and my humidity is higher because I came in, boom, this thing is filling up quick. So I, I, I got the hose so that I can get that hooked up and hook it up into a reservoir, my humidity. Because it puts out heat. When that humidifier's on, it helps keep me 80 plus, right? And it helps also keep my humidity down. We're at 67. We're in bed, so it's not the end of the world, but we're gonna get all that moved out there. Now, we also picked up the Autopilot CO2 controller. So right now I have it set you can see here 1350 but we're at 1330 now if you look at the chart I forgot last night I actually turned it off because I was in here and I said you know let me just turn it off for a minute I was getting some things rearranged I forgot to turn it back on you know boom I came in in this morning and the, the co2 is pretty low but the plants were still very happy very very happy even though the CO2 wasn't as high as I wanted it to be. You can see, man, they're beasting. Because over here, this is day 20 veg. And it's a very thick, deep canopy, just like everywhere, man. I mean, it's nice and thick, which is what we want. The plan is a 30-day veg on these. That's the current plan, but let me show you from back here so you can get a look. Now, you can tell this plant here, see that leaf? It's because she's getting blasted with wind. She's trying to protect herself. You know, she kind of pins her leaf down like that. When they get hard, when they get hit hard with the airflow, stuff like that, you know, tends to happen. It kind of ruffles their feathers. Got that leaf all twisted up in there. But you can see over here, I mean, it's a very nice and green, healthy canopy. Lots of nice new green growth. They're actually really nice and bushy plants because we've got those two veg dimmers that do absolutely amazing. Let me know what's your guys' favorite light Optic 8 Plus, the new Slim 600, or the new Optic 6 Gen 4. Because let me show you here, and this whole thing is going to have to get moved once we get all this set up in here, but we've got. Optic 6 Gen 4, got a little environment monitor over here now too. So Optic 6 Gen 4, over here we're going to have the Slim 600 because that one you can get a lot closer to the plants. And you can see you know, how high this bed is, but Slim 600 there. Optic 8, since it's best to keep it up higher, those cobs laser beam that penetration down so well, we want more space to bring it up so the Optic 8 is going to be there. Now here's the situation I'm in. Let me know what you guys think about this bed because I ordered more, three more trays and three of these beds. And I got all the beds, set one of them up, 
and realize how huge this thing is. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I will actually show you guys because these trays are four foot by four foot, but when, when I get this bed here, 53 inches, it's huge, huge. My tray is only 48 inches. If I measure you know, the inside over there to the inside over here, we're still at 51 inches. Well, my tray is only 48. Now these bars in the middle will hold it up, but it's just too big. So what I have to do is either, you know, what I want to do is just take these wood ones out here, get wheels on them, you know, because they'll be exactly the size, or build new ones with wheels on them. Because my other option is I was thinking I could get like a uh, die grinder or side grinder and chop off a certain amount, you know, to make it so it's only 48 inches, you know, chop here, here, and on that side, you know, cut a piece out, bring it in and then re-weld it and everything. But that also seems like a good amount of work and plus it's not gonna look very nice when you have all this really nice white painted bed. Then you're gonna have it cut and welded. So what do you guys think? Should we modify these metal ones here or should we go with the wood ones? That's, we're gonna have to find out. I'm not quite sure yet. But yeah, here's some of the, this is where I usually keep the new stuff coming in. Inkbird controller, like their new generation to hook my heater up to. I'm gonna set that up. This is at ambient weather. This here is just the CO2 monitor. It's like a hundred bucks for the CO2 monitor. This is only a hundred dollars. Ambient weather on Amazon and you get the five zones because you got the five sensors on there. That's the, the CO2, CO2 controller. This is where I keep my nutrients. I'm getting ready to water right now. I get all it's actually just these plants here that are gonna get watered because these ones here are actually in bigger pots. I'm actually gonna take that leaf off. Anytime a leaf is touching into the medium, that's never good. I'm gonna actually take this one off too and that one there. Okay, I'm just taking a look at what we've got in here. This is kind of a short branch right there. So we're gonna take that so we don't have growth going there. We want her to get longer so she can actually stick out and turn into a nice little cola. Because these are actually gonna be bigger. These are five gallon pots. Oh yeah, yep, these got watered last night, super heavy. Five gallons takes a lot longer to dry. But you can see, this is a cocoa cork and it also has perlite in there. <clears throat> because uh, if, you, if you dig down deeper, you'll see it's actually soil there's about a third soil in these a super aerated soil it's really really nice but you can see we do have some pruning we did under the canopy here to kind of you know bring that up a little bit this one i wanted to uh, have this nine plant run be mostly natural because we're trying to sh you know recreate mother nature but i want to show you guys how easy it is really to just dial in your environment, the nine plants, a proper veg time, so you've got, you know, a foot and a half deep of canopy, at least a foot, and flower it out. Set your light up high, crank it up, let the plants grow up into the light, and boom, up to 2.4 grams per watt for home growers, which is up to 2.67 pounds. And we've got commercial guys pulling three pounds with some strains with this particular light. But it all comes back to environment, you know? CO2, airflow, temperatures, all that stuff. And right now, I can tell you, under my canopy, we need more airflow in here. Because I've got a sensor in here so I can always see what my humidity and everything is. We need better under canopy airflow. So I'm working on getting like a PVC pipe, maybe four, six, or eight inch to be plumbed through underneath here with holes drilled in it so it sprays air up underneath. But of course we're gonna have to set that up out here somehow. So now this is the most amount of space my wife would let me have. Is a little bit, it's like an eight and a half. See here these are four by four squares and there's only a few inches in between. So it's like an eight and a half by eight and a half area that she let me add on 
We still have the vertical farming veg chamber in there. We've got a, a hot water tank back here. So the plan is to get a plumber to get me some uh, hot and cold water right here. Instead of me having to go into the house to the sink to fill a five gallon bucket with water daily, right? And also, I need to get the, uh, the reservoir. I need to get my reservoir going. You can see this is just water straight out of the dehumidifier. It's usually 6.0, 6.1, 6.2. Right now it's saying 6.3. 70 degree temp in there. pH, okay, 6.2, 6.3, she's kind of teetering. I did just pour some more water in there. But 6.1 is on, on average what I've been seeing. So that's what we have going on, guys. Let me actually play with the dimmers on this for just a moment. I really love how this light looks with the, we've, this is actually the mixed cob spectrum. You can see this is a more yellow cob, more orange. So mixed cob, this is the best spectrum ever, highly refined. You can see those beautiful four Samsung LEDs. And then we have the Cree XPE red and blues in there. Check that out. We're the first ones to do four LEDs under a lens like this with those Samsung LEDs because they're a lot lower power. So you have to use more of them, of course. But check this out, guys. Boom. The dimmer on this is just so nice. Barely click it on. These are the bloom enhancers. And you can see we've incorporated a lot more white light into the bloom enhancer array. Check that out. A lot more white light. And then we've got, so that's on full power. Let me just turn that to half power. Let's turn some cobs on. Also to half power. Check that out. Man. These cobs are very, very nice. I love these lenses. These are huge lenses. Even bigger than what comes in the Optic 1XL 120 degree. These actually, these come from the Optic 4XL. You can see a stainless steel solderless cob holder. Super nice, 120 degree lens there. Of course we have these lights on dimmers too. Uh, the dimmers come in super handy because at sunset, an hour before the sun sets here, I'll actually dim it down to 25%. So I'll just leave it just like that. The Slim 600, it's an eight bar light with the double row LED strips. It's off the hook, man. For Samsung LED tech, for Cobb LED tech, the Optic 8 has proven to be the highest yielder out there. Oh my goodness, see that? You never ever want to have ropes sitting on top of your light. And if you do, make sure they're not blocking your air intake ports. I've been seeing this a lot lately. Guys will have their ropes covering their air intake ports. Well, what if you plug the air intake on your car, right? Not a good idea. Best thing to do is coil them up like this. This light's getting ready to get moved, but you can see we wanna make sure that you don't have any air intake ports blocked, partially blocked, anything like that. So I need to take care of those. And I highly recommend for you guys to do the same. You can see I do that everywhere. You can't block those air intake ports, those are crucial for fan cooling power onto these LEDs that keep them cool so that they last longer and they shine out more light. So when we turn this all down, it's all down. Now the veg, we'll crank up the veg and the veg does these two and those two cobs on that veg dimmer, right? The bloom dimmer does those four corner cobs the veg dimmer has more blue in the light. Then you've got the bloom enhancer. So you have spectrum control. You wanna add more red? Boom. Just crank on those deep reds there. If we wanna add in more blue, we just crank up that veg dimmer. Right now, this is how we're running it. This is only on for one or two hours a day right now. So, hope you guys have a great day, Team Optic the best social media grow team in the world. You guys are the best. Happy holidays to you all. We will keep it coming. Video documented grow series with all the latest optics.
Have a great day, guys. Cheers.